we have reached the appointed hour, 7.30. Welcome to the um, February 11th meeting. Let's rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First is the adoption of the agenda. Um, am I correct that if there are no changes to the agenda, we can simply, by the board, we can simply adopt it? Correct. Okay. Are there any changes at all, additions, or changes in the order of the agenda? From anyone on the board? No. Nope. Hearing none, we've adopted the agenda. Thank you. We'll move on. Okay. I don't see the consent calendar. Does the board have any questions about the January 14th meeting minutes or the bill is paid? Mm -hmm. None? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does any member of the public wish to comment on the um, meeting minutes and or the bill is paid? Yes. Yes, you So, uh, draft minutes again are skeletal. They don't really reflect what happens at the meetings. Fortunately, we've got videotape and can reveal uh, much. Um, but, I, you know, you talk about public outreach. One of the ways you can do public outreach is actually communicate with the public. And I, uh, you know, your, your actions speak louder than words. The other thing is um, we're not seeing billing from Bill Hansel, um, and at this point, we think it, we're projecting that he's doubled his bill, billing up to uh, uh, year to date. And I'd like to point out that uh, the county, when they hire consultants like Bill, they will hire him up to a certain amount of funds, and then they have to revote it in. But uh, the deal that Bill seems to have is. Uh, unlimited and has really no performance objectives and is very problematic for the taxpayers as well as the district. I don't see if we're, the way we're conducting this uh, adventure uh, that we're going to ever stay within reasonable uh, budgets for this maintenance facility that you want to build. So um, more detail. More detail, more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else from the public have a comment? Hearing none, we'll move on. Thank you. Okay, item D, public comment, open Jeff, time. We gotta approve it. What? The draft minutes. Oh, sorry. I completely, uh, yes. I, I can't even read my own notes. That's a bad sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the so consent calendar? Bill is a um, second. Moved and Isabella has seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Great. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining. Okay. So we have uh, approved it four to zero with um, Sivan abstaining. Thank you. And thanks for the uh, catch-up. I guess I'm in a bigger hurry than I thought I was. Anyway, okay. Item D. Public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. Would anyone from the public like to comment? Uh, Stephen, you were first. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as everyone knows, you got approval uh, for uh, the initial plan. Um, and you, the, there were important laws and uh, uh, matters in the general plan that were ignored, the stream conservation ordinance, the uh, commitment to park space, and um, preserving our archaeological um, heritage. Um, and it was very disappointing because I thought we were a county that embraced uh, environmental protection and responsible government. Um, notwithstanding, uh, you got, it sounded like you got everything you wished for 
but now, now, now it, it's going to come to roost. Uh, Eric and uh, Bill, uh, actually, I, I don't. I, I want to use a polite term. They misled the planning commission when they said that the area that the trucks are going to back up on our gravel, uh, they're not. It's very clear. It was really outrageous. We had no opportunity to uh, rebut some of the statements made the second time around. It's unfortunate, um, but you're going to have to live with the budgets that you blow through, and you're going to have to be responsible to the taxpayers, and ultimately the functioning of that um, uh, facility, which it's going to just boil down to math, people. You got a 22 foot truck, you got a 20 foot trailer, you're going to have problems there operating efficiently. We tried to uh, wave you off this a couple years ago, and you guys have bulldozed, bulldozed this through. Um, each one of you has your name on it. You're going to be running, I know, I, I'm guessing that some of you are going to be running for re-election. I, I will tell you this, you're going to have to answer for it. We're going to make sure that, that people know what you guys are up to and some of the things that you've done. Lastly, I want to say, uh, within a week, the CSD uh, violated some more environmental laws when they took down protected trees. Um, and I know Eric has probably been uh, praised of this, but that's a problem as well. Uh, there are environmental groups that are now taking sudden interest to the activities of this district and hopefully we can restore uh, order and uh, environmental protection in this community. Thank you. Thank you. No response? Okay. Linda? Okay. Um, I want to talk about financial best practices and my opinion, this is my opinion, so I would appreciate nobody interrupting me until the end. Please do not interrupt me. Um, as you all know, if you read my email, I volunteered to pay for a couple of lights and a dimmer switch and, you know, some patching of the ceiling in the fireman's kitchen or dining area. This started nine months ago. I worked with the firefighters. They decided what they wanted. I wrote detailed email to the district manager. We talked about it. And then nothing happened, and nothing happened. And then there was another email that said, well, the I, captains are going to work on it. And then I ended up in the hospital and was out of Kaput for a few months. And when I finally found out, follow up again, follow up again, well, nothing's been done, nothing's been done. I'll look into it, uh, blah, 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 blah. In the meantime, I finally decided to get this project going. I didn't want it to be a year project, a year project like the kitchen was. This is a teeny, teeny little project, a couple lights, a dimmer switch. I didn't want it going on and on and on, so I brought over a check for $1,500 as a donation for the project. And I had explained to the district uh, manager that if it was more, I would pay more. If it was less, we'd save the money for something else. No problem. At least that's what I thought when he and I talked. I don't believe I had that written down in one of my follow-ups until he thinks I did recently. So I am absolutely disgusted, first of all, that this project, this little teeny, teeny, teeny project has been going on so long. I'm also thinking it's very, very bad practice to take a check for $1,500 and just hang out with it for a month or two Let's just see what happens when people sign up for the pool, you take their money. When people sign up for camps, you take their money. When people sign up for classes, you take their money. And then if somebody, you know, gets hurt or moves out or doesn't want to do it anymore, you give them a refund. You don't hang around with checks. Oh, checks here, checks there, checks everywhere. Um, I think it was very bad practice. 
to hang on to a $1,500 check that came out of my IRA that I donated last December. Here it is February. Nothing's been happening. I haven't received an acknowledgement thanking me for the donation. Um, I haven't, I, I certainly haven't seen any progress in anything happening. And I just think you guys ought to figure out what you're doing with certain checks. And maybe it's a little bit of, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the Barnello thing. You know, let's just aggravate Barnello a little bit more by hanging on to her check. Ah, oh, you know, passive aggressiveness. Some of you know what passive aggressiveness is. And I'm just thinking that there should be something that says if you get a check from somebody that's a donation for the fire department, then stick it somewhere, not just in a drawer or something like that. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And this is nine months for two teeny little lights and a dimmer switch. Nine months. Understood. That's all I want to say. OK, thank you. Understood. <laughs> Is there anyone else from the public that has any comment? Okay. Moving on. The district manners. Item E. The next item on the agenda is um, to welcome Michael O'Connor from R.J. Riccardi, who will present the preliminary 2018-19 audited financial statements and management report. Michael. Good evening, Board of Directors of the uh, Ridley Community Service District. Uh, as you know, I'm here to present the Audit Financial Statement for the end of June 2019. Um, there are two documents. Uh, the first one I'd like to go is the Financial Statements. Could you speak up a little? Sure. It's just elevate your voice. Okay. So, on the Financial Statements, I'd like you to turn to page one. This is our auditor's opinion, and uh, back to the actual pages. And it is on our letterhead. You can work with the board of directors if you have questions of myself or anyone else to take on. Feel free to contact us at any time. This is an unmodified opinion. It's the best you can receive. Everything was done in compliance with, with uh, professional standards. Next, I'd like to turn to Feel free to interrupt any questions at any time. Okay, so page eight, this is your statement of that position. It's on a full or full basis, as if you were a uh, for profit corporation. Uh, you actually kind of consider financial statements, and one is on a modified full basis. This is on a full or full basis. A modified accrual basis is almost like a cash basis. Uh, so this is uh, on a full accrual basis. I just wanted to point out uh, your total net position. You have a deficit there, uh, 4.3 million dollars, and uh, you know this mainly due came about due to these uh, pension and open liabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. I use a particular term when I um, an entity's liabilities exceed assets. What is the preferred term? Bankruptcy. Liabilities, well, you have a, um, basically a deficit position. I've used the term technically insolvent. Is that incorrect? I would say yes, it's incorrect here. Okay. And what would be the preferred term? It's not insolvent. So um, these liabilities are, are way out in the future, and mm -hmm. there is no amortization schedule to pay these all. Mm -hmm. um, and they change every year. This year they went in the actuarial calculations went in the district's favor and they reduced the liability. Mm -hmm. uh, the general manager and the staff are, and the board are making efforts to put money aside for these liabilities. Understood. So this year was a good year. The economy is booming and the district, the district felt that they had a good year. And so obviously they're putting money away for the main years and also for these liabilities. So, so that's a good practice. Um, but the district is paying these, making their payments on these liabilities. There's no, um, you know, in the future, 
in the near future anyway of seeing, seeing that not happening. Mm -hmm. They've always made their pension payments historically. So the payments are being made. You have these big liabilities out there, but there are things outside the district control uh, as far as, as, far as you know, whether they go up or down. And again, there's no amortization schedule, like a mortgage would have, or a call loan would have, so you can really feel exactly what these liabilities are. Right. So anyway, I would not say you're insolvent. All your bills, if, if somebody's insolvent, they're not paying their bills. Mm -hmm. okay. The district is on top of all their bills. Yeah. I think that's why they use the term technically, but yeah, understood. I appreciate the explanation. On the next page, you have page nine, this is your statement of activities, and it is the uh, result of your all activities for the district for all your revenue and expenditures. It starts off with expenditures. The district is in a business government agency on the business of providing services. These are the cost of the service supply from $1 million. Then you have charges for services that the customer pay. And then what's left over is you got about two and a half million dollars of the taxpayer subsidized, out of which you received over three million dollars. And you ended up with that excess of revenue over expenditures of nine hundred and twenty one thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Insolvent businesses do not <laughs> have that. Uh, that would be a loss for them. Right. So the next page, page 10, is your balance sheet. This is on a modified pool basis. It's not much farther <coughs> than a cash basis. So if you see your general fund, uh, second line from the bottom, total fund balance is 3.5 million dollars. So that's how much money you have in your general fund. And then you have your measure income, which is also positive, 238,000 mm dollars. -hmm. And you do have some of the money assigned, and I know you're going to be doing more of that in the future, mm -hmm. just increasing that annually. So. Exactly. Uh, page 11 is reconciling this with the full approval of the uh, Page 12 is statement of revenue and expenditures and changes on balances again is modified accrual. This third line from the bottom, the general fund had more revenue than expenditures. Uh, $892,000, approximately. Page and, and you measure A fund. 12. Thank you. Measure A fund also had you know, $66,000, $67,000 of excess of revenue over our expenditures. Very good. Uh, behind these pages, you have your notes, financial statements, to talk a lot about the district policies and the county policies, um, as far as your debts, your pension plan, your OPEP plan, and capital, capital assets, which are comprised of, and the related depreciation on those, but I didn't want to point anything out. So if you have questions at some point, you can always feel free to contact me. Thank you for the there, there is also a management report. Um, we do look at the district's controls and how they safeguard their assets due to fraud or error. <clears throat> and really, one observation is that they are doing the breakfast on the table that goes to the general ledger, mm -hmm. and they've gotten halfway through that, and, and they'll, they'll complete that for the rest of us this year. Very good. Okay. And that's it. Excellent. Questions? Um, just again for public record, um, have you found any irregularities or uh, systematic issues that would uh, question the appropriateness of this operation? We did not, no. Um, do you feel like there is um, a reckless expenditures uh, taking place that would be alarming to the constituents? Reckless expenditures? I think the management here is really on top of the expenditures and making sure, you know, they watch every penny. I fully agree with you. I just wanted to, for this to go on record, um, because there are constant questions about the financial operations of the shop. And I um, agree with you that the manager is doing an excellent job of managing the cash flow, but also um, revenues, expenses, expenditures, I should say. Um, so thank you for your audit and um, thank you for your opinion. Other questions?
Um, just wanted to put this out for the record too. The OTEB liabilities have dropped um, a lot from the previous year. Was that in tune with the change from the state of California and the fact that we have that trust set up, putting money aside for that? Um, I don't know if the trust impacted it this year. Did it? It's, it's due to two factors. <clears throat> the figure that Michael incorporates into the audit um, actually comes from a separate actuarial OPEB report that is performed by a third party. Um, so it, it is that takes, every two years? Or uh, every two years with an interim report in between. It used to be every three years, but GASB 75 changed it to uh, have to add into the balance sheet now for the audit, which is why you basically have to have a, a full census done every two years with a mid-year uh, update every other year. Okay. But uh, it's not only from the deposits that have been going into the trust fund, but also from the board policy that stated a minimum of 60000 annually would be deposited into there. Um, and we've been exceeding that. And then the actuarial calculations show that even at a minimum of sixty in a 30-year period of time, which is what they use for the right. amortization schedule, that it would actually wipe the uh, district's unfunded liability. And one other question. Did you find a slush fund anywhere? No, I didn't find any slush fund anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, there goes that trip. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions for Michael? Michael, thank you very much. Appreciate it as always. Real close. Can the audience ask a question? Why not? <gasps> yeah. Linda. Okay. Um, I didn't read the whole thing. But I do have one question on the balance sheet for governmental funds, and that's page 10, whatever that is, where you've got your assets and then you've got your liabilities and equity. And it looks like fund equity, okay, it's got a fund balance, it's got 238 grand assigned for measure A, and then it's got 200,000 assigned for capital replacement, and then there's, I don't know, Three something million dollars unassigned. So my question is, where does this unassigned money come from? And I is un, does unassigned? Well, yeah, obviously, but does unassigned mean not planned? Because here it looks to me like there's a two hundred thousand dollar allotment for assigned for capital replacement and that's probably the pool I'm guessing but I know that in the past every single year there's a checkoff sheet with lots and lots of tasks or projects that you guys all need to do and you've got money assigned money assigned money assigned money assigned but here the only thing that's assigned is measure A which is a separate bucket and then this $200,000 capital replacement. So I'm wondering, is it because you don't go to, you guys don't go to any detail for this, or you don't use the planned amount? Because I know you've got plans for lots and lots of this money. So. Well, I know that they're putting away 100,000 years, is that correct? Mm -hmm. For capital improvement. I think the capital improvement is for district wide. So it's not just a pool. I think there's a lot of facilities here. Uh, obviously, they're, they're planning on increasing that pool and more. But this money is, 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 is obviously, it's, they haven't formally assigned it for anything, but there's money being put away for their pension liabilities, for their retiree health liabilities. There's, uh, and of course, their, their budget, annual budget every year. But they, um, Eric would know more. But, Okay, so <clears throat> I guess my question is then, in an audit, you don't go to the detail that says, of this over three million that is unplanned, we really do sort of have it planned. Otherwise, why would you put a big dollar amount in like that? 
that's just, oh, oh, it's extra money, extra money, extra money. Well, that doesn't mean it's extra money. It's just, that's just your equity. That's just your assets over your liabilities. Right. That's all that is. But, but it's not planned. Well, I, 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 say it is planned. I can I can get this. The, uh, <clears throat> that basically represents our fund balance in our general fund. The 200000 for each of the prior two fiscal years, and this fiscal right. year being a third fiscal year, the board has designated $100,000 specific towards capital reserves. So that is where that 200000 comes from, from the last two fiscal years. Okay. So that is a board designated fund specifically towards capital reserves. The rest goes into there. So in terms of the plan, the plan is the annual budget. This is money that is sitting in our fund. As you know, our annual budget is five point something million dollars. This is only three million dollars, so that's not enough in there to even cover an annual budget. This is money that is sitting in the fund as of June 30th, 2019. That's sitting in our general fund, in our bank account, as of June 30th, 2019. But shouldn't an audit be looking at that and saying, well, but you still have three million dollars, and what the heck are you gonna do with it? Have a party? I mean, I, I think there are, it's, it's an audit. And I would think that an audit would want to know what three million dollars is going to go for. No, it's in their bank account. On the side. So Linda, think about it as unrestricted, right? So as opposed to measure A, which is a specific right. bucket, and right. the capital reserves, which are a specific bucket. Right. This is everything else. So um, it's you're also confusing two statements, which is or, or processes in finance. One being the budgetary process, and the other one, which is the audit. The audit looks back at what happened last fiscal year. It has nothing to do with planning. The planning is the budget, which comes next. So when you are questioning what what our plans for monies are, then your participation during the budgetary planning process will be welcomed. This is a professional opinion about the past year, our financial household, so to speak. Okay, so looking at the budget for the last year would We're be a better, no, but it would be better for me to know that, oh, yeah, there's $3 million here, there, and everywhere throughout the budget, and that's what it was used for. You see, here it doesn't say, you know, 25% went to the fire, 25% went to parks. So if you're looking for what percentage goes to what um, part of operations, then yeah, look for budget. Okay. Um, another uh, way to look at the percentages, what goes into what is... Um, Roughly, when you look on page five in the management page discussion, five, okay. um, there is um, under expended, uh, expenses or expenditures, right? You see comparison between 2019 and 2018. You see how much parks, ex park expenses we've incurred, how, many, how much recreation, okay. how much public safety. So okay. that's your percentages. So as, I just as wanted to go a little deeper, and that's another place is where it can be found. So you would really have to, uh, you mean <coughs> that you didn't really read this. Okay. So that's that's why I think that's right. right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, see ya. Um, yeah, so um, for about the 10 years that I've been coming here, um, uh, this firm, Riccardi, has been doing the financial statements and audits. They've always produced happy scenarios, and um, there was one year that we didn't use them, and we had very unhappy scenarios, so we went back to uh, Riccardi. Um, there are limitations to this, and I actually don't, I, I understand, uh, I forget his name. I understand what he's saying that the district has the money in the right columns. However, his assertion that uh, costs are well controlled or something that, quite frankly, he would have no knowledge of. I'll give you an example. This is this falls on our staff. We uh, had a problem in the park. Had to repair our pipe. Um, the district manager went out 
found somebody who could do the work, did not price shop it. The job was done in roughly a day and a half. Uh, and I think we paid them, what was it, $50,000? The lots of, lots of companies in that business, and I, for the life of me, I can't see how uh, you can call that responsible financial management. Uh, likewise, we have issues with liabilities, which are not sh do not show up here, but are substantial, and that, those are the legal liabilities. Uh, case in point, the Millers, you've been, um, you've been fighting them for a year, um, and I guess you're, either you've, you've settled or there's, you're close to settlement, but that money is going to come right out of the taxpayers' pockets. Uh, you also change the um, spending thresholds that do not require a, a public discussion. So now the manager can uh, commit very large sums of money um, uh, to projects without competitive bidding. And um, we are really not facing a, a rosy scenario. We should be looking at this with great caution. Because after all, at the end of the day, when you have a credit card debt of five million bucks more than you have, you are insolvent. I, that's how most people understand it. I understand the, the gobbledygook of, of pensions, but ultimately that is an obligation that we must pay. And um, when we have a situation with this maintenance facility where the uh, uh, architect has no performance, is basically bill, you know, bills as he sees fit, and there's no performance objectives, you're not discussing the budget for that process, for that project. You guys are actually hiding a lot. Yes, this probably, all the numbers probably add up, but it's the truth that we really need to look at. Thank you. Any further comment? Bill. Uh, Michael, thanks again for doing a great job for the district. Um, sorry that the prior comments don't really understand uh, understanding what an audit actually is. Um, but uh, as usual, your firms um, analyze the, the district uh, processes, and I, I personally appreciate your, your work and continued work on it. Thank you. One more question from the board. Um, the reason we continue to hire your company is because of your expertise in government entities, or audits of government entities. How many years of experience do you have doing that? Me, personally? The, the, the firm. Uh, the firm started in 1975. And you've been doing government audits since then? Yes. That's the date of my birth. I'm not going to age myself. <laughs> okay. Just thank you to Michael and his staff. They're always uh, good to work with and easy to uh, work with and accommodating to our needs and our schedule. And, uh, uh, and uh, I just appreciate the professionalism by which they operate. So thank and you one thing much. also I would like to add is it's very nice to see on the end of the management report there are fewer and fewer items to be worried about every year. Thanks for your stewardship in that regard as well. Thanks again. Appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you Michael. I um, need a motion to uh, accept as we Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> okay. I have a motion to accept from Bill and a second from Leah. Is there any further discussion on accepting <coughs> the audit? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item E2, fiscal year 2019-20, second quarter PL budget to actual variance report. Eric? 
Great. Um, well, to be uh, parlaying off of the last topic, this is an unaudited uh, financial statement. This is our uh, just looking at profit and loss, uh, basically budget versus actuals for quarters one and quarters two combined. Um, a couple of the items of note, I did give you a, a detailed staff memo, uh, but just to be clear, um, you know, the primary revenue at this point of time in the year is typically taxes. We have received our first major allocations of uh, the current secured. Um, in total, the district received a little over 1.1 million in net general property taxes and 855,000 in special assessment net. Um, it should also be noted that as of Q1, um, our general fund had earned a little over $17,000 in interest um, alone. That does not include Q2 because they haven't calculated or allocated what our Q2 interest will be, but uh, that 17000 already exceeds the planned budget amount for the entire year, so that's a good uh, notion. And again, uh, it's been several years since we've needed to take out a dry period loan through the county, so uh, hopefully we can stay on that course. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, for you know <coughs> the primary cost drivers still remain wages, benefits, um, as well as our uh, uh, pension and other annual payments, um, primarily the lump sum uh, unaccrued uh, or unfunded accrued liability payment that we make every year uh, up front, as well as our insurance payments and things like that that are one-time annual payments that are made uh, in whole in advance. Uh, Q3 will bring in uh, recreation program registration funds as that uh, gets ready to open up, including pool uh, activities. Um, so that will bring in a significant cash inlay in addition to the continued uh, intake of various uh, property and special assessment taxes. Um, cash balance as of January 31. Uh, was stated at 3.57 million. Um, I chose January 31 instead of December 31 just because it's more recent and I thought it was a better uh, thing. Um, that is a significant increase over last year of almost a million dollars uh, cash in hand at point in time. Um, so we're doing good there. Uh, and then obviously during the first six months we continued to deposit another $50,000 in accordance with the budgeted amount into the district's OPEB trust. Uh, otherwise, I try to give you some variance notes at the end of the uh, financial statement. Um, but if there are any questions, I will do my best to field them, recognizing that I don't have all of the backup data immediately in front of me. Okay. Any questions from the board? Um, just a short comment. Um, we have, due to your very acute um, fiscal leadership, we're saving $30,000 a year just in you know, making payments one lump sum ahead of time, making sure we don't take out, try out, uh, um, what are you calling it? Dry, dry period loans. So, thank you. Well done. Yes, thank you. Any questions otherwise? No. Any questions from the public? Yes, sir. Yeah, first of all, I guess I really, I don't want to be Mr. Doom and Gloom. I want to be positive where it's, uh, uh, where it's warranted. Uh, I do think we do have a better handle on uh, what's going on than we have in the past, and that's due to Eric's and his staff's work. Um, so I, I want I want Eric particularly to hear that. Um, getting back to reality, though, um, I think there there's two things that are going on. We, we have uh, higher real estate values than ever before, so that's higher tax revenues. And our programs are continue to do well. They're some of the best. So these are two economic engines that we have long term that can bring us into full solvency. And I'm sorry to say, I uh, I agreed with your first statement uh, uh, that uh, Jeff that uh, we are insolvent, as are a lot of districts, but we also have some great advantages. Um, I believe with prudent management, 
uh, we can meet these challenges. Now let's look at some of the costs that we have incurred. I mentioned uh, some of these, what I feel are really excessive costs, unnecessary costs. But also we've expanded our staffing, which uh, hurts us short term and long term, um, long term liabilities. Um, I do not know why we employ so many people on a full time year-round basis. Um, I mean, it's nice to do, but is there really work for them to be productive? I kind of think that that needs to be examined and um, decisions need to be made uh, to trim operations. This is what normal businesses do. Um, I know you're all proud of your business experience. I know you all have business experience, but I can't imagine you running your businesses or your personal lives like the district runs our budgets. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, one correction, our staff components are the lowest they've been since I've lived in this community. Um, we have not expanded. We have actually contracted. In the, in the office staff? That's not true. In overall staff. Well. Okay. Anyone else from the public like to comment? Okay. No? Okay, moving on. I need to approve it. Thank you, Eric. Yes. For the presentation and order. Item E3 is a resolution regarding the offer of open space in the OP subdivision and places resolution 2020-01 before the board. Does the board have any comment at all on the presentation? Questions? Kind of straightforward. I'm thinking that uh, we don't need any more liabilities piling. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, to clarify, um, the motion, or I'm sorry, the resolution is to decline the offer of open space in this OQ um, subdivision. Um, which then may be offered, I believe, to the county uh, if we do not accept it. Um, in light of some of the issues we've had in both managing open space and some of the risk associated with open space, which um, I believe we will have forever, um, I don't believe that it's in our best interest at all to accept any new open space. And um, that's just my feeling, I don't think, by the nodding I'm seeing, I don't think anyone in the board feels different. Mm -hmm. However, um, nothing else? I, I just want to be clear, there's two OFU developments. There's the senior development, and then there's these properties. And what we're talking about are, is the land next to the properties right off of Lucas Valley Road, is that correct? It's it doesn't include the the land that's along Miller Creek, because I do think we need to hang on to that, or that needs to be in a protected status. This, this is, um, thank you. I think this is what's referred, used to be referred to as the Daphne property. Correct. <coughs> this is um, sort of at the intersection of Las Galinas and Lucas Valley. Yep. If you understand what I'm saying. Yep. Yep. I, the other. By the way, I fully the, support. The senior it. facility is actually informally referred to as the Oaks. Okay. Any questions from anyone? Can I have a motion regarding um, approving <coughs> the resolution from anyone in the board? So moved. We have a move and then. Sivan is second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving resolution 2020 01 to decline the um, offer of open space. Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> All right. <coughs> okay, moving on to item E4, the district manager's report. But the last item was one of the more interesting ones, but we moved right to that. Uh, on the district manager report, just a couple items of note. Obviously, there's been a lot of other items in this agenda that have been consumed in the last month or so. One, uh, obviously, was brought up at the beginning of the meeting. Um, 
we did, uh, Bill Hansel uh, of Hansel Design and myself presented to the Planning Commission on January 27th the merits of the park maintenance facility uh, project. It was unanimously approved by the Planning Commission as presented with a couple of very minor um, conditions attached to it, having to do primarily with screening uh, for one of the homes located directly behind, and the appeal uh, period has already come and gone. Um, so now with that, uh, Bill and I have already started getting together and talking about what our next steps are, trying to develop a calendar in terms of uh, estimated timing, uh, adding in some contingencies, and as we do that, we will uh, be sure to present more updates as these come along and working uh, to identify other consultants who will be needed, such as structural engineering, civil engineering, landscape design engineering, uh, so on and so forth, and then we'll be able to move into the building permitting stage, uh, which will also be uh, laborsome and cumbersome, I am sure. Um, otherwise, uh, moving forward, uh, we're also, I um, already began working on the 20, uh, fiscal year 2021 uh, budget creation for next fiscal year. Uh, I did include a uh, brief schedule of when those will be presented. As you can see here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six various public meetings um, that the uh, draft of the budget will be presented leading up until final adoption. So those will be coming in with the next board meeting. Very good. Any questions for Eric on either of the two items? <coughs> I, have, I have a couple if nobody else does. Um, these engineers and consultants are we going to be going through a bidding process to identify who is going to be involved? And are these, I'm assuming that they may be subject to all of the rules, um, you know, cost levels, et cetera, et cetera, that, um, you know, for a public entity. Is that correct or not correct? Uh, not entirely correct, no. These okay. are consultants that you bring on, which is an actual uh, cost of construction. So Okay, uh, so uh, they do not necessarily apply to that particular right. rule. Okay, right. well, that's good. How about public bidding? Uh, they would like a formal RFP process, mm -hmm. no, but we will certainly go out and uh, get as many uh, bids and proposals as we possibly can. Okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, this enough. isn't like a sealed bid process, mm -hmm. not on the consultant stage. Once we have plans designed, uh, permits in hand, everything else, and uh, a very lengthy and detailed RFP based on a million and one factors, including environmental reports, uh, County requirements, civil, structural, and design. That will go out through a very formal RFP process for a seal bid. Good, very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, from what I understand, now the district manager has added placeholders for several more meetings, board meetings, and hearings, and budget stuff, which I think is great. What I'm wondering is. Where is, is there any thinking going on about reducing the number of fire commission meetings and reducing the number of park and rec commission meetings because there doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in either being on the commissions and it also doesn't seem to be holding up very well that everybody can attend and maybe they need a little extra time off. So I was just wondering if that would have any effect in any of this planning for extra meetings that would be reducing meetings, commission no, meetings? Uh, I, I don't believe there were any extra plans because the commission, I, I can't speak for the fire commission, but I know for sure that the Park and Recreation Commission has um, thought about potentially meeting less frequently, but that would actually increase the likelihood of the meeting not happening should something come up in the individual uh, commissioner schedule. So it's actually better to keep it once a month and uh, make sure, you know, to the best of commissioner's abilities to attend once a month. If something happens, then, you know, it's obviously less frequent. We can feel the quorum, but um, it has been decided that it would be best to keep status quo. Again, I can't speak for the fire commission, but that's what happened at the park and As of right now, the fire commission has not discussed meeting Okay, well, I was just thinking that if you plan for less meetings, then people <coughs> can plan around those times. And I know you can never think of something come up at the last minute, but I was just concerned because there doesn't seem to be any interest in either of those two, two commissions. Okay, so nothing's going to be done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Stephen. Okay. So I have a comment on that, but I'm going to wait until the uh, parks session. Um, as far as the park maintenance facility project, um, why don't we have a budget? What are you guys afraid of? You guys are going to be, there's going to be a, I, I know you're going to trash me as, uh, as is standard practice around here, but you still haven't produced a budget. You haven't even thrown it out. When we, when this uh, facility was originally uh, planned, it was half the size. We had uh, various designs. We thought it would be about 50 to 70,000 bucks. Now that appears the architect's fees. And there's lots of custom features in this design. How much do you plan to spend? Are you gonna are you are you gonna float a bond issue? I mean, really, you guys are not being responsible to the public. You're not being transparent, and you can meet over the market all you want, Jeff. But if you don't, if you're just gonna mouth and not really tell people what's going on, you haven't really achieved anything. Maybe you got yourself reelected. I don't know. But I I don't like to be in the position of constantly asking for the laws to be obeyed, for transparency, and for safety. Those are the three things that are important to me. Oh, and the environment, which actually is pretty much trumps everything. But but um, I don't see how you guys, you know, pat yourself on the shoulder and say everything's fine here. We we got a great report from the auditor. Everything's beautiful. You don't. Right, and I will say this also, until January 27th, we didn't have a project. How do you budget for something you don't have? Everybody who plans anything plans a budget. That, if you build a house, you plan a budget. You figure out how much you got to spend or how much you have to work with. You haven't done that. You have not been public. And that's why the, the cost has skyrocketed. And that's on your shoulders. <laughs> That's on your shoulders. Okay. Thank you. How much do you think that custom uh, ironwork's going to cost? <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, as you may recall, when we renovated the firehouse kitchen, our original budget was sixty thousand dollars. No, um, it was twenty-five thousand, and you had a donation for it, and you refused. No. And I got you a bid for twelve thousand. You spent sixty thousand. Okay, we're not here to debate. This was... Uh, it could have cost the taxpayers we, zero. Uh, you complained that we don't follow laws. We had to follow laws, and that's why it um, happened. You're, you, you, you don't what happened, happened. happened. That's, that's not true. So, um, original budget was 60000 We weren't able to receive any bids that were nowhere close to it. So, the kitchen cost close to $100,000. To expect the, uh, the maintenance facility to cost seventy thousand dollars when we spent hundred thousand dollars on a kitchen is just absurd. I, I don't really know where to begin. <laughs> okay, thank you again for your comments. Anything else from the public? Okay, we we'll move on. Eric, once again, thank you for your work on the. On the <coughs> we'll move on to item F, which is fire department matters. Um, and Chief, would you like to? Hi. Sure. Good evening, board members. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'll start off by giving you a, an update on the fire chief recruitment. It's going very well. I'd like to thank Board President Jeff Naylor for spending an entire day with us yesterday. He was a panel member. There were two panels that interviewed six candidates for the position of fire chief. We had six very strong candidates. Uh, from those interviews, the city manager and the deputy city manager were selecting finalists that they interviewed today, and they're paring down that list to an even smaller number. And then the final finalists will go before the city council tomorrow afternoon uh, for interviews. And from there, I'm sure a selection will be made in the very near future. So it's moving along very quickly, and I'm sure by next meeting we'll have uh, an update announcing a new fire chief for you. So, but again, thank you, Jeff Mueller, for, it was an all-day process, um, it was exhausting, uh, but I appreciate uh, your help and 
we sat next to each other and it was a pleasure getting to know you better as well. So thank you for your help. Thanks, bud. Thank you. So it's a three-day process for the applicants. Yes. <laughs> they are basically taking like a vacation time to uh, come in and go through this. So that's, yeah, that's it's, tricky. It is. Yeah. They're, they're exceptional people. And, uh, and how many did you say it's been narrowed down to? Uh, I'm not sure. They haven't told us that. Oh, okay. It started with six. Thank and you. then they're narrowing it from there. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next item uh, on the agenda is just a reminder that the press conference for the new Pulse Point app is uh, Friday, February 14th at Station 52, starting at 10.30, and everybody's invited to the press uh, press conference. Um, I'm not an app-savvy person at all. Like most of you, I, I, I use the, the phone all the time for certain functions, but uh, typically I get stopped dead in my tracks, even if I want a new app, because when it asks for my Apple ID, I never can remember where that is, and I never can launch it out. But this one in particular, Pulse Point, I went to extra effort because of this press conference. I figured I'd better get this app on my phone. And I just want to say, it's one of the neatest things I've seen. And I'm going to encourage you all, it's a free app. Um, I'm kind of jumping the press conference here, which I'm not supposed to do, but I'm so excited about this. Uh, you can you can download this app free, and what it does is, by just opening it up, it shows you every call, fire and EMS call in Marin County that's taking place right now, and those that have taken place in the past few hours. So for instance, if Engine 58 were to go on a call right now, we could all just open our Pulse Point app and see where they were going. Mm -hmm. Now if it's a residence, it won't give the address numbers, it will just give the street. But if it's a business or a facility like this, it will actually give the address. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to know what's going on. So let's just say, for instance, this summer, you see smoke and you hear sirens. You can open your pulse point now. It opens instantly. And you'll be able to find out what's going on and who's responding. Pretty neat. And then there are um, options. If you want them, you can activate them. If you're within 500 feet of a reported cardiac arrest, it'll notify you in case you want to help with CPR. Now again, it won't give you a residential address number because we don't want people running into people's houses saying, I'm here to help with CPR. <laughs> but this is actually saved lives, this app. This app is, is live in other counties. It's been live in Sonoma County for several months now. It's going to go officially live on Friday in Marin. Um, it will also point you to the nearest defibrillator. So like if there is a cardiac arrest in this building, for instance, it will notify you if you're within 500 feet of it. It will tell you there's a cardiac arrest and point you to the nearest publicly accessible defibrillator. So it's a phenomenal app. And I, I have it open all the time just to see what's going on around the county. So. Okay, and this isn't beta software. This is actually live right now? Yeah. Great. It is. So it's really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, something else that's also really neat is we're doing a medic rotation. We have our medic with us here this evening. He's doing PCR right now. Oh, he's doing PCR right now. He's doing medical reports right now. That's, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> that's good. Uh, uh, so medic rotation is this. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking the, the Marinewood paramedic and we're rotating him or her, him onto uh, a Santa Fe ambulance so that they get a little bit more active experience, uh, more patient contacts, and able to um, treat a patient from the scene to the hospital. Yeah. Typically, an engine medic might just treat at the scene and then hand off to the ambulance medics. So we're just wanting to give the marine medics more patient exposure and the opportunity to work in the ambulance. And so that has multiple benefits, not only for the paramedic and for the community and our, the customers that we serve, but it just increases the overall interaction between our firefighters mm -hmm. and really promotes that we're really just one big fire agency. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy about that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. How do you fill that uh, empty space? With the San Rafael firefighter. With the San Rafael firefighter. Yeah. Thank you. They just trade. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 
So there's no overtime. Uh, something else on the EMS front is something called the Direct Connect Pilot Project. Many of our EMS calls, um, a significant percentage, are for patients, customers that call 911 several times. So frequent flyers. Yeah. So what we're trying to do with this Direct Connect program is we've partnered with Marin County Health and Human Services with some of their experts to actually ride along on calls and observe and try and develop options for more successful outcomes that don't necessarily involve transport to the emergency room. Obviously, the, the ambulances are very busy and the emergency rooms, actually called emergency departments now, that's the, the proper term, they are very busy. And if we can divert patients to other programs that are more appropriate for the patient, based on their illness or issue mm -hmm. um, and keep them out of the emergency department and then also reduce the number of 911 calls, we're increasing service levels across the board. We're keeping the, the ambulances more available for those that really need it and we're finding more appropriate levels of care for people who have chronic illnesses or issues that call 911. Is that, is that pilot underway right now? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And the length of it? Uh, 90 days. 90 days. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Went to the third, third row during one day. Pardon me? Oh. Just on the um, The next item is the AmeriCorps uh, NCCC team that we've had in San Rafael now twice. This is almost like a Peace Corps group, but they do work uh, nationally. They get assigned to projects within the U.S. And Quinn Gardner, our emergency manager, who actually was an AmeriCorps member earlier in her adult life, has been instrumental in getting these teams into San Rafael for up to 10 weeks at a stretch. And what we've been doing is housing them at one of our temporary fire stations that we've used during our facility construction projects. So we're able to house these people. And basically, they're working full time, seven days a week, doing vegetation management projects in San Rafael on both public lands and in some cases on private properties for people that can't afford to do vegetation clearing. And so um, what we're doing now is uh, our district manager, Eric, and Sean Rule, uh, one of our vegetation management inspectors, who's also a Marinwood volunteer firefighter, by the way, which is, is great, there's a real connection there, along with Quinn are in the application process right now to get another team back here later this year to do work mainly in Marinwood this time around, in Upper Lucas Valley, those areas. So um, we're in the process of, of filing that application, so we're, we're very excited about possibly getting one of these teams back because they do a lot of great work. That would be great. To follow up on yeah, that, thanks. the AmeriCorps folk have certainly let us know that they expect this to be an incredibly competitive round. Um, with much more requests than they have ability to do. So uh, uh, I like our chances, but um, it's a grant application, and you never know to get awarded. Understood. And if we don't get it, we'll just keep applying. Right. And Quinn Gardner is very persistent, <laughs> very persistent on these, these fronts, and she is uh, well connected too with the AmeriCorps. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, Santa Rafael staff, uh, especially on with Quinn and Sean, they've been amazing and have put a lot of time and a lot of work into the application itself, into gathering all the proper demographics um, and then getting it to me at a point where it's in far draft form so that we can sit down and really refine it and fine tune it and uh, expand it a little bit uh, by the time it goes out. So um, without their help, there's no way we would have time to put it. It's a, it's a complex application process. We just, we would not have time without the resources that they have provided simply as part of the relationship. So. Is, yeah. is Sean Rule the is a is he a constant contact with San Rafael? He, he yes. is an employee of San Rafael at this point. He's one of our vegetation management inspectors, okay. but because he's also a Marinewood volunteer, uh, what we've done is we've kind of allocated um, a certain amount of time for him to actually focus on Marinewood specific okay. fire prevention, vegetation management. 
and helping with the application as part of that. So again, we just like that connection that he grew up in Ringwood. He's a Ringwood volunteer. He's got um, obviously Ringwood knowledge and a real connection. So we're just kind of utilizing him uh, more in the Ringwood area uh, than in the San Rafael area. But he's a San Rafael employee. It's been a nice exposure opportunity for him as well to yes, work absolutely. on a project like this. So it's really been uh, interesting yeah, and fun to work with him he's on. A really good guy. He's a great, yeah. he's an excellent Excellent, guy. Mm -hmm. excellent. What's his name? Uh, Sean Rule, R U L E. Well, uh, the cooperation yeah. between the two departments continues to uh, make me feel very confident. And I appreciate all of the you. efforts and all of the. Uh, it's um, initiatives. I consider it seamless. I consider it we're, we're one agency. Mm -hmm. Very good. And your employees are a very high value. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, uh, on page two of the report, um, we're about halfway through with the next firefighter recruitment class. Uh, this is uh, a class of four recruits that will become uh, San Rafael firefighters. They're going through, uh, is it eight weeks? Of in, it's eight weeks, right? It's eight weeks of intensive fire academy training, basically Monday through Friday, eight to five. And uh, the Engine 58 crew uh, has been instrumental in assisting with the training. And recently, they actually did a full uh, one day. Uh, it was a wildland training class, wasn't it, Captain? Correct. Yeah, uh, two days. Two days. Uh, Can you just briefly training. describe it since you basically led it? Yeah. Um, so we provided the same training for the last academy and then once in a while we were asked back to do the same thing and um, it involves uh, all the standard evolutions that they're required to know during their first year of probation on the line. Progressive hose lays, some of you may have seen them up on the hill here in St. Vincent's uh, in the summertime so we went back to that area and got them well versed in those skills. Um, and we get a lot out of it too, just being having the opportunity to train them, mm -hmm. and uh, we use that to keep our skills up to code as well. So. And it just increases the collaboration and builds the relationships between all the staff members, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And then the last item is just a quick update on the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority, which continues to form, but obviously is unfunded. Measure C on the March 3rd ballot will determine whether or not that rolls forward. It's got three, this is just very broad based, three uh, primary um, areas of focus, defensible space around homes, businesses, and critical infrastructure, vegetation management and fire hazard reduction, early alerts, mass notification, and organized evacuations. Um, in late uh, January, uh, Queen Gardner did a great job of uh, getting a, a basically an update on the city's wildfire prevention and protection plan and an update on the authority. Um, we had these three meetings throughout uh, in various points around the community. And we had some um, Marine staff and um, residents who attended those as well. And uh, the call activity for January will uh, provide that on the next uh, uh, staff report or Data analyst specialist David Catalanoto, his wife had a baby last month, so he's been off for several weeks, so I wasn't able to get the, uh, the data from him, so we'll just have two months worth at the next meeting. Okay. Very good. And that's it. Any other questions for the chief? That's awesome. Chief, thank you for your report. Um, help me understand this. We are now fully staffed, correct? Our department is fully staffed, correct? Are we? Yes. Yes. Um, why? Do we still have overtime costs of like $25,000 a month? Well, you're going to have overtime if somebody calls in sick. You have a minimum staffing requirement of three, three people. So you have to have three people on duty per day. It's just like San Rafael and most fire agencies. So if there's somebody who's sick or on vacation or on workers' comp and there's a vacancy, you need to backfill that, and that's backfilled with overtime. So did we have people sick or on vacation in this case? I, I would assume that that's typically why you, you see yeah. overtime. Also, sometimes overtime is paid for special projects or training. We send uh, firefighters off for training maybe on their days off. They would get paid overtime for that. That can happen on occasion. So I'm just going to give you a general summary of what generates overtime. Thank you. And I also, uh, 
our staff work quite often in Santa Fe um, through the shared services agreement. So overtime goes in there as well, but that actually gets reimbursed. Uh, we just billed the county um, last month, uh, shortly after the close of the quarter for that. And uh, I believe I actually have the number here. Uh, that is uh, almost $40,000 for Q1 and Q2. Um, overtime expense that uh, was billed to Santa Fe that we should be getting uh, paid for uh, sometime soon. So thank you. We get that check rolling our way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That's a very important point. That's another uh, really kind of a strong component of the shared services and collaboration. Um, Santa Fe, there's there's a great deal of overtime due to the fact that we have several vacant positions. And this recruitment is going to help us fill some of those vacant positions. But then due to workers' comp, or sick leave or vacation, we need to fill positions. And sometimes we just don't have enough off-duty people that are available to fill, so it becomes open to Marinwood, and they will fill them for us. That's a big help. And again, now it puts the Marinwood firefighters on a Sandra Felt engineer ladder truck, which is just, again, great cross-collaboration training. But as Eric mentioned, very important point, we re reimburse for that over time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any comments from the public? Ron? Yeah, I wish you could prevail on uh, the, the AmeriCorps program to come up uh, with a, uh, a program to reduce the fuel load on the county farm property. And uh, I know it's uh, Parks and open space uh, never saw a weed they didn't love, so there's always a pushback from them. But I've lived in CSA 13 for 55 years, and for 48 of those 55 years, the county cut those weeds every year until a lady came in as head of park and rec and thought the snails and the birds were uh, more important than people's homes, but I think it should revert back to a more proactive fire prevention because uh, you're aware of the winds we've had in the last week. If there had been a fire, we'd have lost part of Idleberry and part of Appleberry uh, in Marinwood from flames at the county farm. And, uh, I think we've got to be a little more proactive on that. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, um, so uh, thank you for the chief uh, sign up um, uh, for a good report. Nice detail, love it. Um, I wanted to make a few comments. First of all, uh, Paul's point kind of creeps me out. I don't really, as a citizen, um, I don't really need to know who's having a med, med when a medical emergency is happening or if there's a fire three miles from my house. What it does, though, is it, it puts my uh, IP address and phone number in a database and it just, I don't know, we're just giving up everything to Google and and the government, and I just think it's kind of creepy, but I, I know that's not your personal interest. The other thing I, but a couple things. First of all, I too, I, I love our fire department. I think it's a professional bunch led by professionals, um, and I, I love it. Um, but I also, we also need to keep in mind that uh, 70 to 80 percent of all of the activity takes place in the city of San Rafael in the shared services area, and yet we have the long-term liability uh, for these staffing people. So we really we can't go along with this current agreement. We have to resolve it. Let's make it one department. Let's work out an agreement that is fair for both the citizens of San Rafael and uh, Marinwood, and uh, hopefully we'll have enough money left to pay the pensions of our office staff. Thank you. Anybody else? Chief once again, thank you for the report. Appreciate it. Next fire commission meeting is March 3rd.
Okay, then move on to Parks and Recreation matters. Uh, draft minutes of the uh, Park and Recreation Commission from January 28th. Any questions from the board? No. No. Okay. Nothing? Okay. Any from the public? The draft minutes? Yes. No. Okay. All right. Um, I do have questions on the, the report, though, and some general comments. Is that the next item, or um, I'm about to announce it. Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, Park and Rec Maintenance Activity Report. Again, does the uh, board have any questions or comments on the report? I don't. Go ahead. Um, Eric, is there a plan to recognize the Lions Club for the donation to the, the three thousand dollar donation to the store? Um, we well, we've done that, um, but in terms of uh, uh, recognizing the town, like a, a proclamation or something? Uh, I just, I'm curious to know what we do to say thank you. Uh, yeah, typically, uh, they get a, a formal letter sent to the board president, or the Lions Club president. Do they have a map net? We can put it on the front of that. Do they have a magnet? Well, you know, like the little magnets that you put on people's cars. Oh, uh, yeah, no, every have a time we turn it on. Uh, along those <laughs> lines that are in there. Um, and to be clear, too, I mean, they are, uh, they use the oven as much as any other group uses the oven because they're in our facility. I mean, this is a uh, kind of a two-way street on this one. So them matching uh, basically the cost on this uh, uh, fairly closely matches the use on it. Well, they, the Lions Club typically gives us an annual designated donation uh, for a, a need that we have specifically requested this year. It was the oven. We actually got this donation from them last fiscal year. Uh, so, and then finally we're able to locate the proper oven and get that put in just recently. And now it's in there. Okay, so all, it's all in, and they're working in the one that's Every, in the hallway is our old one. That is the old one, okay. correct. We don't want it to go away. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna sell it as a piece of art, cultural art, you know. It is. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, we're we're determining what to do with it. It doesn't have a lot of salvage value to it. The oven itself doesn't uh, regulate cold temperature uh, properly, and uh, uh, there's a reason it was replaced. Yes. Okay. Any comments? Any further comments? No question. On the oven? Or As well, we? we'll talk later about who's taking one shift at Grace Moss. We'll talk about that offline. Are, are we talking about the oven? What, I, I'm confused. Um, to start talking about the oven. That's okay. I was just open. I was just about to open up the topic to the public. Would you like to talk? Well, I don't have anything to say about the oven, but I do have some other things to say. Yes, well, we're talking about the uh, Park and Recreation Maintenance Activity Report. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of things, sure. So, uh, last time, uh, uh, last meeting we were here, all of us walked through the, the main part of the uh, receiving area here and there was a small group of people celebrating with a bottle of wine whatever they were celebrating they were well behaved but then drinking in the middle of our community center and no one said anything not a single word was said can you imagine that happening in San Rafael City Hall, Nevada City Hall, and in the other CSDs. Why are we turning our backs to, to apparent behavior? There's too much alcohol consumed in this facility and in this park, and both are explicitly, well, uh, in the park anyhow, it's prohibited. Um, after the meeting, I have spoken several months about safety concerns after the attempted rape of uh, uh, a minor here with a stolen handgun. Let's 
get some video surveillance. You, you see it at every retail shop. Why can't we have something like that? That could have helped prosecute this young man who basically got off with a slap on the wrist. The girl, however, will have a lifetime of uh, PSD or whatever they call it, post-traumatic PTS or whatever, whatever they call it. Uh, we've got to do better with our safety of our children. We've got to watch the alcohol use and abuse. It happens all throughout the park. It's not just the, the Latino men who come here after their soccer matches. It happens on Friday nights at the, at, the, at the horseshoe pits. It happens in here. You know, we are a family, or, well, a, 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 let's say, call it PG type environment here. This should be a safe environment. And um, Marin County does have a problem with alcoholism. Um, and I, I just, I would like to see you guys take your responsibility seriously. This, there's no reason, I, I can't imagine you saying, hey, good job, we let that woman drink a bottle of wine in our reception area. I, I, I just, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, if anything at all. Okay, thank you for your comments. So you don't want to say anything? This is going to come up during your campaign, okay? The way that you're dealing with the, uh, the safety of our community. You are aware of the problems that are going on and you're doing nothing and you're ignoring legitimate questions from the public. Now you can talk about all the, how much you care about the public, but the bottom line is it's the way that you, your actions are, are being done here in this district. You're doing nothing. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Um, anybody else from the public like to comment? Okay. Next thing in our commission meeting, February 25th. Are there any um, board member items of interest? This evening? I guess it's Luke's baby. Yeah, congratulations. I was going to bring that up. Uh, as you guys were informed, Luke is on a, a bit of an extended leave as is his legal right. His family had uh, welcomed a new child in uh, just last Monday, or I, I don't even remember what the day was, the second? The um, a little boy, Grand Tower. So he is out for a few weeks uh, taking care of his family and will be back, I believe, towards the end of February, uh, assuming all checks out and continues to go well. That said, he is a bit fairly well plugged in and uh, still texting and uh, looking at emails from time to time, which I'm sure is a bit of a welcome distraction for him every now and then as well. But uh, yes, congratulations to Luke and his family on their uh, recent addition to their wonderful family. And I just wanted to say that the spring, summer, morning review that I got in my email today, not yet, official one that's printed but it looked amazing and I just want to congratulate the staff on their hard work and putting that together and I love the 60 year commemorative part of it too. We've just got the printed versions delivered here today they should be hitting resident mailboxes within the next uh, couple days um, and as Savon pointed out, uh, this year uh, we recognize uh, the 60th anniversary of the district uh, and there's a really neat and fun uh, pictorial as well as some kind of historic notes all about not only the development of the district but the development of Marinwood as a whole. So uh, it, was, it was a fun project for staff to work on. I encourage everybody to take a look at it. There's some really neat uh, uh, and historic photos in there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember, did we last year send out to parents when we sent out the reminder that this is when camp registration is? Did we send out a PDF of the review? Uh, I wasn't or aware that they sent out a PDF of the review this time. But, they, uh, I got that email, but... Or uh, it was like a link to, the, to, to get to it. Um, so, I don't know. That would be a better question. But I'm just saying, like, I like the fact that 
they did that because it's got everything in there. And so if there's things that parents want to do before camp even starts. Yeah, well, printing, printing took longer than normal. It's been on the website for a little while, but we've been getting a lot of calls, and uh, Robin has been doing a fantastic job, uh, especially in Luke's absence, thought that it would be a good idea to send out an email to everybody on there that just reminds them, here are our registration dates, here's where you can find all the classes, uh, so yeah, on and so perfect. forth. Good. I will pass that on. I'm sure she'll appreciate hearing it. Cool. Anything else? That's it. Okay, just a, a reminder, I think I'll just follow up on what the Chief said earlier, and that is again to remind everyone that we have a, uh, uh, several ballot measures that are important in Marinwood um, coming up on March 3rd, and I encourage everyone in the county, or everyone in the district to vote. Um, does anyone um, from the public have any um, requests for future agenda items? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, and then I also I want to recognize someone, but um, the fountain that uh, keeps getting clogged, that keep we keep hearing why it can't be fixed or why it's difficult. And anyhow, thanks to Linda and a few people, we have figured out a solution uh, uh, to that problem, and basically it's the solution found in your woods, sent that information to Luke, and that was because we were talking among ourselves. It was the public and Luke talking. We got it to him. Uh, we got a des great design for something that basically the, it uses all natural materials and it will not clog. Um, so that problem will be solved if there is the initiative to solve it. So. Um, building on some of the frustration that we've had before with handrails, with cleaning up graffiti, with maintenance. Um, look, I mean, this is basically what you need to guys focus on is, is the maintenance and safety of the community. Thank you. And I think we should rec all recognize Linda for her generosity or perennial generosity to the district. It's all appreciated. Well, I'm hopeful that that solution works out. Yep. Very good. Okay. If there's no other business uh, before the board this evening, I'll uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Bill, thank you. I'll Bella. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you all for attending. Aye. Aye.